today I'm here with a good friend of mine, Gareth Smith. He's done loads and loads of traveling. So I'm gonna interview him on tips to do socializing whilst you're traveling. First of all, could you give me some info on where you've been, what you've done, what you've been up to? You right, team? Um, yeah, I used to work on cruise ships for about three years, and that's where I was sort of got the travel bug. Absolutely loved that. It'd be like every other day, it'd be a different port day. The problem was you used to spend uh, about eight hours in the country and you're on to your next country. So you fall in love with it and then you'd have to go to the next one. But that would give you like a rough idea where to go to for holidays and just general activity. Um, couldn't really give up that lifestyle but needed to make more money. So I joined the Royal Navy, which is, um, they don't deploy you all the time, but I'm soon to deploy very soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully gonna get some more traveling in. It's been about two years since I last uh, went traveling on the ships. So. Yeah, really looking forward to that. So the first question that I'd like to pose to you is which countries or cultures did you find people most easy to communicate with and why do you think that's the case? Okay, so um, always went to America as a young child because obviously they're so easy to communicate and they absolutely love English people. They're into British people, sorry. Um, and then besides English speaking countries like New Zealand, Australia, I'd say like Baltic countries, um, Scandinavians, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, um, sorry Holland, I'm Scandinavian, but Holland and Germany, extremely good with their English, and really approachable, really friendly and genuine, um, so they give you a warm welcome, although French people, they, they have a brilliant, um, they're brilliant at English as well, they tend to be quite difficult, especially for me, I might be different for other people, they seem to be a bit funny, they like to answer in French and they want you to speak French so you just give it a good go try and speak French if not just put on a silly accent <laughs> and then we'll um, sometimes in Spain certain regions of Spain they, they lack English and then the more you go east English is going to go it's going to become more broken English so um, but it's a universal language now so generally it's not really a problem so second question in the countries that you found harder to get by and to communicate with people, what were the problems that you encountered? Sort of problems I've encountered, yeah. Well, you've always got to be concerned and um, alert towards your pockets. Living in England, living in London, you, you, you expect it and you, you should be used to it. However, they're not targeting, let's say, English people, maybe when we're drunk, but they're actually targeting more tourists when they're going in the holiday mode. When you go abroad, you are now that holiday person. You look different, you speak different, you act different. So that's that's always a problem. So you've got to be, you've got to keep your head up, you've got to be sensible and sort of expect the unexpected. Um, I have had problems with transport all the time, all the time actually with taxis. Always seem to have a problem with taxis in the Mediterranean. They're either really slow or they just don't understand your English, or they don't understand your Spanish, or they just really just don't give a fuck about you. So I tend to have a problem with taxis. I try and avoid them as much as possible. So public transport, pickpockets, food poisoning, is a big one. <laughs> Do you have any more pointers on how to like, not get pickpocketed, what to look out for? Stuff like what that. to look out for? Yeah. Um, don't be walking around, take what you need, okay? Basic money, Okay, your phone. You don't really need any more than that. And if you've got a bag, keep that bag on you at all times. If it's under the table in a restaurant, put your foot between the bag strap. Okay, they can do all sorts of scams. And um, don't take, if they want to give you something free, don't accept it because it's always a catch, to, always a catch. So just, feel, just try and be streetwise as much as you can. What do you think are the best places to go for a party? Best places to party? Yeah. Um, Okay, there's probably loads, just lists, whole bucket list, but um, any major city, is, you're going to be able to party well. So um, just listen a few, like Prague, excellent party scene, nice and cheap, Budapest, say it again. Um, and then you can go to iconic like British tourist or party places like um, Ibiza, Magali. But the problem is there you're getting too many sort of youngsters, British piss heads, loads of British singing songs and sort of that might ruin your, uh, ruin the party scene. What was your favourite? What was my favourite? Yeah. 
Honestly, Cancun. Yeah. I absolutely love Cancun. They really go out of their way to sort of please everyone. Yeah. So they've got to accommodate the Americans, and obviously the Americans want everything. <laughs> so um, yeah, I enjoy Cancun. So, whilst you're travelling, what's the best ways to try and communicate with someone who has no understanding of your language and you have no understanding of their language? No understanding whatsoever. Yeah. Um, okay. Without being rude, try and be a bit more direct with what you say. Keep your words as basic as possible. If it's beach, plaza, where is the plaza? But um, just like, don't really beat around the bush with what you're trying to say and what you're trying to get to. If you go around and say, oh, excuse me, do you speak English? And they'll go, word, 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 word. You're wasting your own time. You may as well just ask them the question. If they don't know it, then they don't know it. Move on to the next one. Um, so be more direct. Okay, then you can use your phone as well and try and use Google Translate, which half the time doesn't seem to work. Um, if not, just use international words. There's plenty of international words going around now. Um, say, let's book a beer, etc. Okay. Okay, next question. Where did you find the most approachable and nice people? Approachable. In the, out of all the places you've been to? Yeah. Not allowed to say me. Not allowed to say you? No. Difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, it's not cool. <laughs> um, I know I keep falling back to the States, but super approachable people, super friendly. I remember one time I was, I was queuing up and I was a like, short change, we only a few daughters, no, no big deal, but um, this gent behind me um, volunteered to pay the, the rest of the bill. And uh, yeah, I think that just summed up America really for me. Um, and again, then sort of like university cities, similar sort of people there for the same sort of experience, having a good time. Um, but all this is all sort of weather dependent. Go to a beach and stuff, everyone's pretty approachable at the beach, everyone's in a happy mood. Yeah. But if the weather was shit, I'd probably say, do what mate, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why am I here? Why are you even here? <laughs> so next question, has your view on the cultures and people of the world, and your whole world view about people changed since you started travelling? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, yeah, there's certain country I saw, never really thought I'd like to go to, visit. Um, but ended up going there and having just such, such a great time and being so, um, they were just so welcoming. So yeah, definitely, I mean, far more open-minded. And yeah, fucking fuck the police, motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Next question, do you make any preparations to travel to unfamiliar cultures? If so, what are they? Yeah, without a doubt, um, I like to learn about history. Either if it's history that I already knew, I'd like to build onto that knowledge. Um, learn basic lingo. So don't go unprepared and it's not actually know how to say anything. So it's just arrogant and ignorant. Um, and for me, I, I love to uh, learn about a local football team, whether it's like a small club or um, it's a big team. Learn a bit about it, and then that way I can actually relate to it genuinely. While you've been travelling. Have you experienced any dangerous situations? And how would you recommend dealing with these types of situations? Uh, to be fair, I've been quite fortunate with uh, all my travelling. My job was being a photographer, videographer, so I'd be going around the city with a camera and a tripod. So you're a target, basically. But I'd, I'd carry this big metal tripod, and I'd, I considered it as like a weapon. If anyone was going to come at me, they would be getting whacked. <laughs> and um, honestly, like, no one ever ever tried it. I just because you had a tripod, it, it is a weapon. Yeah. Um, but one time when I was in, I was in Rome, and I wasn't taking pictures. You know, I already took the pictures already. Left the camera in the um, on the ship. When I went out up the steps, they wanted to put a little band on me. And I instantly said, No, no, I don't want it. No, no, I don't want it. Then they related to my football shirt, saying, Oh, West Ham, West Ham, I like West Ham. Yeah. Uh, I used to support Chelsea, and I was like, I don't like Chelsea. <laughs> but um, he's like, no, my friend, I want you to have it. I said, I'm not giving you anything. I don't want it. He's like, no, my friend, you, you have it. I was like, okay, you sure? I was like, yes. Walked about two minutes down the road, and his friend was like, you pay for this. You pay for this. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I expected this whole situation, so I was pretty angry. So I just sort of raised the tempo, and I just got as angry with him as he was with me. And his friend came over, he's like, no, no, it's a call, it's a call. Cool. So I'm not saying that's how you should react. Try and avoid the situation completely. 
just don't take what they're trying to give you because it's not going to be free. There's always a catch. Uh, do you have any specific tips for dealing with danger, avoiding danger for girls also travelling? Girls? Yeah. Um, it is a difficult one because um, I almost feel like life's a bit easier for me if I'm going to these sort of certain places and sort of forget how different it is for women. Um, but I guess, same for men, just take the bare essentials out of you. Don't take unnecessary stuff. There's no need for you to take your makeup out and stuff, although why would they steal your makeup? That'd be a strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, handbags are expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just take the bare, bare essentials out of you and um, just try and be tree smart and try and spot the genuine people from the uh, thieves, which might be extremely difficult. If so, just try and avoid speaking to strangers. It's like you get taught at school. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. So last question. What's a good way to strike up rapport with anyone from any culture, any place, regardless of where they're from? Okay, um, be as genuine as possible. Um, for me, especially with men, I like to uh, discuss about their, their, their club football team and their local football teams. Um, a really good um, example was when I was in Albania, um, known to be quite a dodgy country. Um, and we was just me and my old man was just talking to the, uh, the waiter about Albania as uh, their national team, and uh, about six uh, Albanian lads, men let's say, um, overheard us and bought us a round of drinks just because we was uh, interested in the country. So um, it's a great example. Um, so I, it's it's not just about football. Just be be genuine and open-minded about the history, the city, the culture. Just take a genuine interest in. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think if you're travelling, you're, you've already got that mindset anyway. So, okay. Fair enough. So you went to Albania recently. What other plans do you have coming up for travelling? Um, plans set up uh, in two weeks' time. I'm uh, going away for nine months. Yeah. We're going to be going to Gibraltar. Beautiful, beautiful British place. Um, then we go on to Crete. We go into the Swiss Canal. Through the Gulf of Aden. We're going to make our way to Singapore and uh, Japan. So it's a nine month deployment. It'll be hard work, but it'll be really good fun. Um, so yeah, quite exciting. Okay. Um, so that was my friend Gareth. Loads of tips on socialising whilst you're travelling. Uh, you have an Instagram page as well if you're like photography whilst you're travelling as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, really keen photographer. Um, I like to show off my photos as much as possible. So um, check it out. G Smith on tour. And any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, you know Ryan is your man. Yeah, I knew that. You knew that. So that's G Smith on tour. If you want to give him a follow. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Coming at you more stuff soon. Say bye to Gareth, guys. Bon voyage. Oh wait, I can't hear you.